Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday morning. Well, Thursday afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here, May 16th, 2024. It's about 12.14 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the earthquake globe shows a 2.4 into the Hawaii area. Looks like things starting to pick up there slightly. Uh, overnight, we did see some uh, activity stirring up out here. In the uh, New Madrid seismic zone coming in with a 3.8 early this morning. Looks like a couple other uh, earthquakes in there as well. Of course, this is always a little concerning because this region is very capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. There's the felt reports. Of course, the 3.8 is going to be felt fairly uh, broadly out there across that region. Uh, mainly due to the type of rock and whatnot that's out here. A lot of earthquakes on the... Um, East Coast and uh, east of the Rockies here generally are felt much stronger and at a considerable larger distance than, say, for the West Coast, for example. But I uh, got a little earthquake activity stirring up out here, and that is right smack dab in the New Madrid seismic zone. Let me show you guys the hazard map here. And uh, as you can see, it's right in there. Been uh, It's been a little bit since we've seen a 3.8. Um, they can get, obviously, bigger. And uh, let's take a look at historical data here real quick. I pulled up 4.5 and above uh, for this area. Now, the 4.5, the well, at least comparable earthquake, the last quake we seen was back in 2011 for a 4.7. And as you can see, they, uh, 2011, I mean, it's been over 10 years now. It does look like we should at least see one earthquake of that magnitude here soon. Uh, and again, though, if you look back here at a important date in history, back in 1811, 1812, they've seen a series of large earthquakes out here. Started with a 7.5 uh, back in 1811, December. A couple hours later, 6.3. A few hours after that, a 7.0. When you see this type of series of events here, it normally means that something bigger is coming. Uh, and then another 6.3 a few hours after that. Next day was a 6.1, and uh, it was about a month or so, almost a month and a half later that we've seen a 7.3 and a 7.5. So definitely a good series of earthquakes out here that, uh, well, if that were to happen today, there'd be quite a bit of considerable damage taking place with the uh, highly populated region and the infrastructure that's out here now in place. We've grown a lot. So uh, 1811, you know, we're, we're building 200, over 200 years now since a, um, a decent amount of earthquake activity has taken place out here. It almost seems like everything's overdue for quakes. If you think about Southern California, the Cascadia subduction zone, many other fault areas across the uh, country, it seems like we're, we should be coming up on a time here of uh, larger earthquake activity. So we'll continue to watch that, uh, but for now, 3.8, the largest here in this uh, little earthquake activity this morning out there in the New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, Texas area still getting uh, a little bit of movement out in the oil fields. Uh, one earthquake out here in the uh, Trinidad, Colorado was just out here a couple weeks back. That earthquake coming in about 3 o'clock this morning, it looks like. Roughly uh, a little bit later... Uh, a couple hours following the movement here in the New Madrid seismic zone. So it does look like things were strained out here across this area around that time. Uh, Southern California, not, a, not too much going on here. There's a little bit of earthquake activity here from yesterday and today, just off the San, uh, San Andreas Fault, the southern branch here. But aside from that, um, you know, any, any day out there is going to see this amount of earthquake activity and there's really not a lot of big earthquake activity it's all microquake movement in fact the largest one here is going to show a 2.6 on the San Jacinto fault zone there near Borrego Springs further up north into northern California uh, Bay Area fairly quiet right now into the Cascadia subduction zone of course this is the area that's seen a four-pointer here recently 1.8 and a 1.6 down there into the southern end of the Cascadia, 25 kilometers deep here, indicating that's a subduction zone earthquake. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, aside from some very small microquakes. Yellowstone got, uh, looks like a handful of smaller quakes there from yesterday, so let's double check that real quick. 
Um, yep, there's some of those earthquakes from yesterday and overnight. A handful of smaller quakes there. It does look like the USGS is listing them. This is some type of wind event stirring up out here again today. Looks like it's right in the middle of it. Uh, let me just verify this with the windy map. And we're going to check out the wind gust. And oh yeah, they definitely got some decent wind gusts out here. Uh, of course, when these seismograph stations are exposed to the elements, they do pick up blowing. Uh, it could be sand, wind, leaves. Uh, in general, it's just the wind itself that creates that type of uh, noise that we're seeing uh, on this graph right here and across the majority of the seismograph stations out here. So watch for that throughout the day today. That uh, will probably continue. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here to Hawaii real quick. Things are lighting up out here across the Kilauea Volcano again. Still somewhat deep for these earthquakes, though. Roughly a mile or two, some deeper underneath the area of the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, let's go double check the informational statement here from the USGS on Kilauea Volcano, which I believe is still sitting at a yellow and advisory. These guys working today. Potentially, maybe. Kind of hung up there a little bit. All right. Yeah, still at yellow. Just going to check a couple graphs here and see what we got. There's some of that earthquake activity right here on the southern uh, crater area of Kilauea Volcano. There's some of those quakes. Also see uh, a handful of smaller quakes in there as well. So earthquake activity at a steady amount. Uh, deformation up here across the area has been on the the uh, uptick here recently and it looks like that continued overnight this is the last two days uh, and the last week here of the electronic tilt meter at the summit and the eastern rift zone so we're still going up and the overall trend here over the past month shows that stair-stepping inflation event that uh, Kilauea volcano has been uh, doing for quite a while we'll continue to watch that and ultimately it gets to a point of maximum pressurization down here and there's you know there's two different things that could happen we could see an eruption at the surface or we could see a magma displacement uh, off to either the southwest rift zone or even maybe off into the east uh, rift zone area so we'll continue to watch that definitely getting uh, to a almost a breaking point 3.0 north island uh, there's some of the older earthquake activity from yesterday Really not a whole lot of newer activity out here. Some movement around Taiwan, southward into the Philippines. Uh, but aside from that, just looks like a general day in that area of the world. Japan seen a handful of smaller quakes as well. There's a four-pointer, 4.6 4 up here along the Aleutian Trench. It looks a little bit more active up here today across this area. 4.6, 37 kilometers deep here associated with the subduction zone, the Aleutian Trench area. Aside from that, um, you know, there's definitely some movement working its way up through the Cook Inlet area and uh, around the Anchorage region. Let's go back here to the globe, see what else we got. Mediterranean area, fairly minimal. I mean, twos and threes, pretty common. The Atlantic Ocean here doesn't look like too much is going on. Uh, way up north, some movement there from yesterday. It looks like we did have another 4.6 well north of Iceland. Uh, so let's go check out the Iceland map here real quick. And by the way, folks, we're doing the member drawing here. And uh, a couple hours. We're going to do that at 3 o'clock here Pacific time. So it's 12.22 right now. Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday. It was super swamp, but we'll definitely get it taken care of today here at 3 o'clock. Uh, earthquake activity shows about 59 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. All magnitudes brings in those very, very small unfelt earthquakes as well, uh, which are sometimes hard to detect, but these guys are uh, picking up on them. Noticing, uh, you know, still some activity around the Grindavik area and more so off to the southeast area of this town. We'll continue to watch that because things are getting quite inflated underneath this area in just a matter of time uh, before we do see another fissure event take place here. The latest update from the Icelandic Met Office put out today, um, just kind of chatting about the magma accumulation underneath the area, remains at a stable rate. About 16 million cubic meters of magma have been added to the chamber here. So the uh, 
probability of a new magma flow and another eruption in the coming days is quite high. Uh, the key to watching this is where elevated earthquake activity is going to take place. The eruption warning may be very short, and most of the time we get about a 30-minute window. Uh, here's our current state of inflation. Look at that. We're pretty much above all other levels here. So this is going to be... Yeah, this is going to be in the red right here, the newest one. These are all levels of magma accumulation there uh, prior to an eruption. And the green star, yellow star, uh, orange star, and so on. We're not quite up to this blue one here. The blue one was from um, the first one that kicked it off. Is it the first one or second one? It looks like the first one. No, that's the second one because there's the first eruption there uh, last year in November and uh, December of last year. So things are obviously well inflated and it's just, again, it's just a matter of time here before things break through to the surface. Uh, South America region, a handful of smaller quakes out here. Looks like the latest of 5.2 from yesterday. So not a whole lot of newer quake activity. There's some older new, uh, new quakes there, but uh, in the white circles, a little clustering going on there. All right, space weather activity. I think we had some G2 storming kicking up there overnight. Not for sure if that was forecasted or not, but uh, we did see it kick up around the KP index of 6. So that put it around the G2 class storm. Things have since calmed down here sin uh, since then. And uh, the forecast here, at least for now, still remains relatively calm. And not a whole lot of the auroras in the forecast. Uh, still seeing some proton events kicking up here into the polar regions. Mainly the north, uh, northern polar region overnight. Flaring activity has been uh, a little bit calmer over the past 24 hours compared to well, the last few days or so where we've seen numerous X flares and the largest X flare of the solar cycle with the X 8.7 that came in there from that uh, now um, far side sunspot region. So uh, minimal C flare activity. Haven't really seen any M flare. There's a little one kicking up. Um, so things are dropping off, but we do have a few active regions here to watch that are coming around the eastern limb of the sun. And uh, let's see if we can get a better view of that. There's one of the active regions here. Looks quite complex here. There's d definitely some complexity. This already producing uh, a couple M flares and even its X, even an X flare itself. Uh, so we got to watch this region. All other areas out here, for the most part, look relatively stable or weak. Um, this area was growing a little bit, but it does look like it's diminishing slightly. And um, so really, the only sunspot region that we have of, of uh, any potential stronger flaring is going to be back here. And we'll watch this in the coming days as it does rotate further into the Earth-directed view. And no doubt, uh, if it does produce any subsequent CMEs or multiple CMEs, then... Uh, well, we'll be in the uh, the lineup there uh, in terms of the uh, bullseye shot towards the planet. So overall threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare, 75. X flare, around 40%. And there's a proton event continuing. Continuing here for a couple days now. Um, really no signs of it letting off, but eventually it will. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that had produced an X 2.9, which is a pretty strong flare on Wednesday. Yeah, so Kevin's picking up on it. Quite dynamic. It does look uh, like it's a very active region. So it's now named 3685 uh, is the sunspot. we got to watch there on the uh, eastern limb. All right, Storm Prediction Center, far as severe weather goes. Got an enhanced area out here across portions of Texas and Louisiana, uh, main threat's gonna be some large damaging hail with some wind potential, but we also have a 5% chance here of tornado probability and a 2% around that. Also a little area up here uh, with some tornado potential. And uh, after that, as we head into the day on Friday, that weather shifts further to the east and south there, bringing with the uh, severe weather threat. Looks about the same, mainly some large hail and that uh, up to a 5% chance for tornado probability. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here, get uh, everyone's name there in the member drawing in the fishbowl.
may pick out two people today. I don't know. We'll see. See what happens when I'm under the pressure, when I'm under the, the lights of the camera. But uh, we'll be doing that here in about two and a half hours now. Uh, it's 1230 right now, California time. So at three o'clock, California, that's going to be six Eastern time. There'll be a separate live stream that will pop up and we'll do the uh, live drawing. We'll pick out a uh, lucky winner here. Got to be a member here on the channel to be entered into that uh, lucky bowl. So jump on board. Uh, not only do we do, do the uh, contest every month, but also extra videos provided for members only. Extra perks, include, uh, including some emojis and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Need to add a few more on there. And I know it's been uh, about the same here since the beginning, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll add a few more here soon. In the meantime, folks, have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here in a couple hours for the member drawing. Take care.